hang on, hang on. Right. Well, good Monday morning and welcome to this special edition of Monday Mornings with Mark, the stewardship coach. I'm Mark and I'm your stewardship coach. And this is a special edition of what I typically hold every Monday morning for those who follow me, my group teaching time. Given the fact that we are involved in a crisis that none of us have ever seen in our lifetime, I wanted to come and just share with you some real practical things and ideas about how you and your church can manage and navigate your way through the current process that or crisis that we are involved in. So I mentioned I'm Mark Brooks. I'm the stewardship coach. There's some key information about how you can learn more about me if you're a guest to our webinar today. We're glad to have you. Easiest way to track me is on Twitter. I'm Stuart Stewardship Man, it's capital S, capital M. That way, if you follow me, you'll be able to um, find all the links of various things that I'm writing and tools to help you. And that's really my passion, to reverse the decline in giving one church at a time, starting with your church. If you want to email me, my email is, uh, address is listed below. But if you're listening on audio, biking somewhere, running on a treadmill, it's mark at act17generosity.com. Mark at act17generosity.com, and I'll be more than happy to respond to any email um, that you might send uh, my way. So looking forward to what I'm going to be sharing with you today. We're all engulfed in, in, in the corona crisis, and this was a, a, a screenshot of a webinar I did actually for a client of mine, Urban Awareness, and they built this. And you can see when I did this, it was early in the process because the map of the United States isn't totally covered in red. Now it is because uh, COVID-19 is in all of our 50 states and the death toll is rising daily. And if you're like me, you're probably thinking, what does this mean for us as we move forward next? One of the things that I do every Monday morning in our group teaching time is I take some aspect of stewardship generosity and I teach in on it for about um, 20 minutes or so. And then we have time of question and answer for our clients. This morning is going to be a little bit different. And I'm going to be talking to you about some immediate steps that your church and your church leadership needs to take now. We're going to deal with sustainability, and I'll talk with you a little bit about what that means in a moment. And I want to be asking the questions that maybe nobody's asking yet because we're so focused on this Sunday, but we need to start asking longer term questions. And we're going to talk about how will this impact banking. I've invited my good friend, Dennis Moses, who's been in the banking industry for a long, long time and knows a lot about what's going on to talk to us about what he calls the great reveal. And I'm going to let him share that with you and explain what that means. But just quickly, here has been my three-pronged approach to dealing with the coronavirus. And I got this out early in March to all of our clients. It was one for caution. Of course, we want to wash our hands and be as cautious as we possibly can. But it is also also compassion. And guys, this is a very, very important element of what we're doing. We need to show our community what the church looks like in times of crisis. And the question you should be asking every day is, what can our church do to minister to our community through this time? And then here's what we're going to begin talking about for all of our clients within the next few weeks, and that is sustainability. You've got to be thinking beyond the current crisis. And so I've said to our clients that we're thinking four to eight weeks out of where we need to be, and that's going to be impactful for us. If we'll plan now for the things that are we know are going to hit us, we'll be better prepared as we move forward. And that's why I've been focused on sustainability. What can you and your church do to sustain your ministry? Because if you go under, it doesn't do your community any good to lose that vibrancy of your fellowship. You've got to sustain that. So here are some real practical things. First of all, cut spending. You just got to stop spending because your offering is going to be less. I told my clients, even with my brilliant plans, there's only so much I can do to help minimize the loss of giving. You're going to have to cut spending. Cut your budget makes no sense to have a budget that you know you're not going to make because you're going to be looking at anywhere from maybe 10 to 30 percent loss in revenue and income. So cut your budget right now because you're not going to make the budget that you once had. Then here's a practical one. Turn the thermostat down. 
I mean, this sounds crazy, but think about it. You probably got your thermostats program preset for cost savings. Guess what? The times you've got them pre-programmed to turn on, there's nobody in the house. So turn those suckers off. Turn the lights off. In other words, here's what I'm saying. Don't waste any money. That's where we're at. Think 30, 60, 90, 120 days out. I know that you're captured by the immediacy, but you've got to start thinking more longer term in terms of the sustainability of your ministry. Think that way. And then here's the final one, and this is going to be the segue into what we really want to talk about. you got to protect your assets. I told somebody this earlier this morning, I have to be real careful how I say that, but it's crucial that you protect your assets. Some of you have debt. Some of you are moving into a new facility and you're looking for financing. The question that I have is, well, what is this going to do with the banking industry? I know a little bit about banking, but I don't know near enough to help you with that. And so I'm glad today to introduce to you a friend of mine that I introduced to my clients who every Monday morning get this newsletter. It's called The Stewardship Coach. This uh, morning when I released this edition of The Stewardship Coach, we began talking about sustainability. But I opened with this line. A pastor called me at about 6.50 in the morning, and he said, if I lose eight Sundays in a row, I'm going to be $300,000 in the hole financially, and he has a $2 million debt that we're paying down. What is that brother going to do? Well, I didn't have all the answers, but in this edition, I began interviewing my good friend, Dennis Moses. He has, uh, has agreed to come on and be with us today. Dennis Moses is the CEO and managing director of Church Capital Resources. I'll let him explain that ministry to you in just a moment. But Dennis has a rich background of having been in the banking industry for many, many years. Uh, I first met him when he was vice president of the Bank of the West for their church lending division. And now he has moved into this position of helping churches. He's always a guy that I bring to the table when I work with churches and they need to acquire funding. And when it came time to deal with this issue, there isn't anybody better that I could bring to the table to talk to you than Dennis Moses. So Dennis, thanks for being with us today. And um, I'm just grateful for your ministry and what you do. C could you give, give me just a maybe 60 second explanation of what Church Capital Resources does for churches? And then we'll kind of launch into some of the questions that I know folks want to hear, hear from you. Let me unmute you, Dennis. We're doing this live, you can tell. There you go. Dennis, are you with us? Yes, I am. Thanks, Mark, for having Thanks me today. And, you. you know, I, I have really appreciated our relationship, and you've done a lot of things to help churches that I've been working with uh, to raise money to help pay back the debt. But Church Capital Resources, simply put, is a it's a financial consulting firm that raises, help find money, raise money. You raise it where it's on gifts. We raise it through uh, contacting over 20 of our correspondent lending institutions. So we're a, a guide uh, to help a church not only find the money, negotiate it, but um, make sure that they can afford to do what they say they're going to do. So hmm. if you think about it, well, that's, in essence, what we do is we go out and act on behalf of the church, but the church makes the final decision as to what they want to, how much they want to borrow and when they want to use it. Gotcha. Gotcha. And I can just say this, guys, uh, uh, engaging Dennis and his firm is such a time saver for you as well as a money saver. I, I had a staff member one time, Dennis, um, they at the, at the church, and it was that, I don't know, he was director of something or other. It took him Four months, he talked to 10 banks, <laughs> and it was a big time suck. So I appreciate the ministry and role of what you guys do and, and, and have down through the years. Dennis, I, I think all of us are wondering, well, what's next? And there's a lot of question marks out there. But you and I have been talking back and forth, and I've been sending my clients a lot of the input that you've been giving to me. But early on in our conversation, you said something to me that stuck out, and I promised that we were going to talk about this. You said to me at one point, Mark, this is – this is going to be a great reveal for a lot of churches. Can you walk us through what you mean by that? Yes, Mark. The great reveal is that, like so many in our economy, it's been so strong, so good for so long that the big reveal is it's going to come to light 
that churches don't have the cash reserves for even mm. one month. In other words, it's like a lot of families living month to month, paycheck to paycheck. And we're seeing a lot of churches that are, that's going to be revealed in the months to come. You know, and I would concur with that. And, and it's crazy because I've said to clients for years, you've got to you've got to get a fund. You know, you've got to set up reserve money. And 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 honestly, so many of them don't. And I get that the you know it's a difficult thing to do. But um, we're now seeing that man, the churches that have got a reserve fund. Um, it sure helps you sleep a little bit better at night, you know, knowing that you've got that um, as we move forward. Well, let me ask you this. What, what, what can churches do right now um, today to, to, to sort of prepare themselves from this? Because as you and I have talked, there's really kind of two aspects of this. You know, we're talking to churches who, who have an existing loan that, you know, they're, they're concerned about, you know, what is that going to mean? And then we also have clients that are in, in, in stages where, you know, three months, six months, uh, 12 months from now, they're getting ready to start major building plans. So talk us through kind of on both sides of that, what, what, what they need to know and what they need to understand moving forward. Sure. Um, I think the first thing, first part of your question was, what can they do right now? Uh, cut further than you think you'll need to and faster than you think you should. Wow. Because a lot of people That's a are, good point. A lot of people are thinking this is going to be over in eight to 12 weeks. Um, you know, if uh, we're looking at right now a $4 trillion hit to our revenue in corporate America, and unemployment is uh, estimated to rise to 30%. In 1934, un unemployment was 24.9%. So yeah. this, we're gonna get through this. And I like uh, what your newsletter says, uh, this too will pass. And we've got to encourage each one and each other with that, that news. However, uh, we gotta get to the other side of it. So for those churches who have a loan, and they're seeing, and I've talked to one that had a 30% cut the very first Sunday when they didn't have uh, church, they didn't have uh, streaming video of their church service. So they took a substantial hit. But for those who have mortgages, keep in touch with your lender. Let them know what's going on. Tell them what measures you're taking. Uh, if you haven't got electronic giving, start it. If you don't have, uh, you know, streaming video of your church service, start looking into that. Um, and some of it is free to be able to use. But understand this: there is no bailout scheduled for churches. They don't. Uh -huh. Churches don't pay taxes. So yeah. there may be some lenders that will help you with interest only, but there's very little difference between principal and interest, and interest only. What they're going to really want to see before they'll do any consideration, which is regulatory uh, demanded of them by the FDIC if they're a bank. So they can't just automatically do that. So that what I would say is make sure that you've already done everything you know to do to cut back before you make that phone call to the bank. Now, if you are in the process like we have to, right today, uh, we had one loan that was around three and a half million dollars and the bank that we use a lot down in Texas, it's a 144 year old bank with one 21 billion in uh, revenue, uh, excuse me, assets. Uh, they have suspended all lending for, for the next 90 days. Wow. And so this is going to have a trickle down effect. And this was, like I said, this is, uh, a $21 billion asset they took in about $775 million in revenue last year. Think about the smaller community banks and small, you know, small banks like that. So for those churches that are, if you've got it signed up and you've got your architect and you're moving forward, um, what are you going to do to build? You know, we talked to a builder this morning that said he can't get people to go to the job site. You can't have 10 more, you know, depending upon where you're starting, if you're starting from scratch and putting in the footings and things like that, uh, everything has been shut down. So I think that the biggest thing is getting uh, ready uh, to, pres you know, 
thinking of how to um, be prepared when we get on the other side. I think most churches are going to have to hit the pause button, button if they're ready to start construction. Getting prepared is leadership, and this is something you know so well as being a, a senior pastor before, banks are going to look at the leadership of the church. What are they doing during these times? And not only just in how to manage your cash, to cut back, uh, to start putting reserves as much as you can uh, in preparation for when this we get through this and we can start looking at lending, um, you know, again. Yeah. Hey, Dennis, um, I, I did have a, a question, and, and this is going to come, you're going to hold your breath because we didn't talk about this ahead of time, but, um, you, you know, I've been getting calls, and I know you've been getting calls from from a lot of people, but we, you talked a little bit about the reserve, and, and I've been preaching this for years and years and years, build a reserve, build a reserve, and, and it isn't that I'm brilliant. i tell you how I ended up into it. When I was a senior pastor, we had an air conditioner unit blow out. It was like 35K. I didn't have 35k sitting around, so you know what I did. I had to go to, I had to go to just you know the key people in my church and pony up, or we're all going to be sweating this Sunday. Um, and it taught me to build a reserve. And what I did, um, and again, this isn't going to help you for right now. I'm going to get to my question. My question. I'm going to give you my question. I'll keep talking and let let you think. I had a question of should we should we dip into our reserve to pay bills now or leave it alone because that's what we need as our nest egg to position ourselves better financially. Let me tell you what I did. You think about how to answer that, Dennis. At our church, what we did then after the air conditioner blew out, I knew I needed to set up a reserve. And so we carved out a 10% line item in our regular operating budget. And, and I can't remember what the set amount was is that, that that we had. I think it was it was maybe you know, a month or two of, of, of operating expense at that point. But it took us a period of a couple of, of two or three years to get to that point. But if you do that with intentionality, you can get there. So that, that's not going to help somebody today that doesn't have a reserve fund. But but that was our path at the church that I passed at the time to where we could get there. Now, back to my question, because this is a good question. If I've got a reserve fund, can I dip into that reserve fund to meet needs or or is that going to hurt me long term? Does that make sense? Yes, it does, Mark. And I think what you have to do is do what do what you have to do to get through this. That's, uh, a, good, that's a good answer. Yeah. yeah. Got reserves, and thank God that you do have those reserves and you're thinking about borrowing. Once we get to the other side, lenders are going to understand that why you had to do that. OK, um, good. They're not going to hold you to that because you can say this is where we were and then COVID-19 came along and we had to use our reserves. I think sometime, and I've gotten this from you, is to go and humble yourself and ask for help with the people and leadership in uh, of the church and saying, we're trying to hold on to this, but here again, we have this immediate need. And, you know, our cooler system went out. we got to have to, we're going to have right. to repair. Um, but I think that to me is, um, it is. I think it just, what lenders are going to take away from this is it's going to be a hard, hard time in the future for them to want to make a loan to a church that's living month to month. Mm -hmm. So we, our, our lesson may be for some, and, and it may not help them in, in the present, but is we've got to have a really, uh, our, our, we got to get our financial house in order. Um, and if I'm thinking, I got a project out there 24 you know, months from now or 12 months from now, um, get through this time, but then I need to start working towards having that kind of reserve. Is that what I'm hearing you say? Absolutely. Amen. Real quickly as we as we end, is there a couple of words you'd say, hey, here, here's some things that churches need to do right now today um, and to, to assure their you know, financial sustainability? I think just hitchhiking off your comments earlier, stop spending immediately, uh, postpone all mission trips, domestic abroad. I think that, that's pretty much been cut out by air travel anyway. Uh, but it's really protect your cash position uh, and then be able to, um, you know, I think that lenders are going to be looking at 
um, how to quantify how much revenues, ties, and offerings are coming in. Obviously, there's no plate being passed. We're not having church, but how much of the revenue is coming in during the week in mail? Uh, how much of, is it electronic giving? Uh, and you're going to have to keep uh, keep track of that. But it's the, it behooves every church to get on some type of electronic giving as well as being able to screen their uh, uh, their church services. Because, you know, we're not the church. The body of Christ comes and goes out of that building. So we've just been dispersed. That's all that's changed from um, a month ago till today. There you go. That's a good word. Well, Dennis, thanks for um, your time. I've got up on the screen the uh, websites, churchcapitalresources.com. Um, Dennis, if they need to find information, I'm sure your website uh, is a good place for them to start and find some information. All of our email, my email, my uh, cell phone number is on there. And uh, reach out to me. I'd be happy to talk with you and, and also pray with you. So. Amen. Amen. You know, and I'll say this of Dennis. Um, in fact, we, we met in, in uh, Atlanta before all this happened. And one of the last things he said to me is, can I pray for you? And Dennis is always good about doing that. So Dennis, I'm going to, I'm going to call on you. I didn't tell you I was going to do this, but you're always so gracious of praying. And, and I know there'll be pastors, there'll be church administrators listening in on this. Um, we um, just a lot of people hurt and a lot of people with questions. Would you be so gracious as to end with a word of prayer and let's pray for all those that are out there listening to this and just ask for God's blessing on them. Amen. Amen. Father God, I just thank you that we do have the power of prayer at any time that we reach out to our Abba Father. And Lord, I'm reminded in Jer Jeremiah where it says, trust me and don't despair. So Father, I just pray for my brothers that are leading the flocks today that lord you would just come to them in a way that uh just don't let them discourage be discouraged so Amen. in other words uh lord god help men and all of us to understand don't discourage yourself this week but encourage yourself with god's word so oh, father i thank you for my brother mark i thank you for what he's meant to me and helping so many churches and giving me a better understanding about how to resource the capital to be able to stay out of debt. And that's my prayer too, Father, that we will get through this. Uh, this too will pass. And so, Father, we're just thanking you now for what you're going to be doing in the lives of our churches. And I'm just gratified in knowing all the things that are happening, that church services is being doubled and tripled just by viewing it online. And this is an opportunity for us to be able to reach out to all people in the name of Jesus and share him as the answer for all of our needs. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Dennis, and God bless you guys' ministry and uh, appreciate your time that you had to share with us today. You betcha. Talk to you, brother. And thanks to all of you who have tuned in today. Again, uh, if you need more information, you can contact me. My email address is mark at acts17generosity.com. Remember, I'm Stewardship Man on Twitter. I'd love to have you follow me. I promise I'll follow you back. We're here to help you through this crisis. And so um, God bless you. We look forward to uh, ministering to you further. Have a blessed day.